numerous financial media platforms, including Fox Business Network, RT America, Cheddar TV, and CBS News. Her focus is on a unique golden <coughs> gap strategy that pinpoints how to leverage institutional money in the stock market. That's really that's really what her thing is. She's <laughs> great at it. And in today's session, she's going to be talking about trading and investing in volatile markets. In other words, the markets we're experiencing right now. She's going to be talking about what's driving current market volatility. She's going to be talking about the best index that she uses for gauging market direction. And she's going to also talk about gap opportunities <coughs> with selective stocks. So with that, I'd like to welcome to the room, Melissa Armo. Thanks, Melissa, and welcome. Hello, can everybody hear me? Hi, good morning. Can everybody hear me? Yes, we can. Hi, good morning, Melissa. Okay, let me do the screen share. Can you see the PowerPoint? <clears throat> Let's see. Yes, we can. Oh, beautiful picture of New York there. It is beautiful. I, <laughs> looks nice <laughs> from up high right now, but if you're on the streets of New York, it's not a pretty sight, I'll tell you. <laughs> I was out the other day, but that's a topic for another lecture right now. <laughs> that sounds great. Hey, listen, have a great presentation. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. This is a great topic for today. Today, we're going to talk about volatility and how you can trade this market. And this is a good topic for today because why? The markets are selling off today. The markets are selling off and you just had the QQQs make brand new all-time highs. You just had Apple make brand new all-time highs. You just had Amazon make brand new all-time highs. So the sell-off today is happening really because there was a gap down in the market today. And I called a lot of shorts today for the people that are um, my clients. I called day trade shorts. We did CCL short. We did Boeing short. You could still be in Boeing. And I also called puts today in the SPY, the diamonds, the Qs. Uh, and, and I called a bunch of different puts in Boeing. So overall, I'm looking at this market and I'm saying my expectation was that this would occur. Now, why is this occurring? Well, you could say it's because Fauci's testimony in Congress was saying that there's going to be uh, more cases, that there's this community spread. You can blame it on COVID-19. You can blame it on lots and lots of things. And tomorrow morning, we have another um, unemployment claims number. But the reality is that this market had a big rally since those March lows. And to think that we would 100% recover from what happened since, since early March as quickly as we did, I don't think was realistic. So you have people that are taking profits, you have people that are still concerned about the future, and you have an awful lot of people that are still unemployed in the United States. So when you have people that are unemployed and you have earnings season coming up for third quarter in July, no one knows really what some of these companies' or earnings are going to be. So what I look for is I look at the gap, and stocks gap for many reasons. Stocks can gap on news. The market can gap on news, but they also can gap on earnings. So I don't follow fundamentals, but I do look at the price action in a gap. And we're going to look at some daily charts today. But it's interesting because sometimes the fundamentals and the technicals do match up perfectly, which is what is happening today, which is why we're getting a beautiful sell-off, okay? So I know that there's some chats. Let me just see where that chat is in case somebody does ask questions. Let me just put it up on the side. I'm gonna just put the chat over here in case somebody has any questions as I'm going along. Um, okay, can everybody see the screen? I'm gonna start talking here now with the PowerPoint. So this is an interesting time. If you wanna trade the market for a living, I think it's a great year to start. Why? Simply because of the volatility. Volatility makes for good profits. You gotta know how to trade it. But then you say, okay, well, you should know how to trade anytime you risk money in the market. I'm ever surprised and amazed how many people trade this market and in, in any market and they have no idea what to do. I don't know why people think that they can make money trading and they don't know what to do, but people do. They'll hear something on, on, on TV and they'll take the trade, having no idea what the strategy is, having no concept what's really going on in it. 
And that's really gambling. So what I do is very strategic. Strategic. It's not based on gambling. Okay. So this is a good time to trade because of volatility. Because you can make money when you're trading volatility. So a lot of people work hard and they never really get to the point where they're successful, where they really want to be financially. A lot of people think they're helping themselves by training every day, a little bit here, a little bit there, and they're really wasting lots of time and they're wasting lots of money. You speed up and accelerate your time and your uh, faster chance to get to success when you pay someone to learn their system, okay? And, and for me, myself, I created my own system 12 years ago, but it took me three years to do it. So when you come and if you want to learn what I do and you want to get my train calls, you are paying me for my time and my information, but it's accelerating your own personal growth and your chance to make money in the market, okay? A lot of people, some people have been following me for as years, as long as I've had the stock swoosh, and, and, and they're not making money and they're losing. So you really have to be serious about it. And I think this year is a great year to jump into the market because of the volatility. Because volatility means un moves that happen that are not expected. In other words, a lot of people thought the market was going to continue higher. So the sell-off today for many people is unexpected. To me, it wasn't unexpected. But to a lot of people, it is unexpected, okay? Because people thought, well, we're out of the woods, all right? Anyways, getting back to what I was saying here, no matter what your goals are to trade, you need to have a solid strategy in order to achieve those goals. And the one nice thing, particularly during the COVID-19 period, is that you can trade from home. You can do options, you can do day trades, you can do swing trades. Now, I like to focus on the day trades and options, okay, because they have a set fixed risk. And it's been really nice this year, 2020, working from home. <laughs> Many people out there are working from home who don't normally, and eventually people will have to go back to work. But if you want to become a full-time trader, you can work from home all the time, which is very, very, very convenient. And, and in the summer, it's nice because you can make your own hours. If it's a beautiful day and you don't want to trade, you can take off. If it's a Friday, you want to have a three-day weekend, you can take off. And really, my strategy is, is really part-time hours. Many times, we're out of the trades very quickly in the first 30 minutes of the day. Now, today is a day where I think it makes sense to hold, but you could have been done today with the trades I called in the room by 10 a.m. The fact is, I think that you can make more money on a day like today holding. Why? Because you have a power trend day. This is unusual. You don't normally have power trend days in the market, but today is one of those days which is called a power trend day. The other nice thing about trading is you can have weekends off, you have evenings off, and you work for yourself. What does that mean? It means that you're in control of your own life. And if you're an independent person, you set your own hours, market closes at four, <coughs> and the only thing that you have standing in your way from your income that you can make from the market is how much you're risking. The share quantity and the size quantity that you take, okay? So like for example, if you short, we shorted Boeing today, right when it broke. Um, and if you had gotten gotten it right where I called it, with a thousand shares and it dropped a dollar, you could have made a thousand dollars. If you had two thousand shares, you could have made two thousand dollars. Okay. So, for example, when you do something, it has to do with the share quantity and the amount of momentum and the drop if you're shorting or the rally if you're going long. We went long Apple yesterday. That was a really nice move. Again, Apple made brand new all-time highs yesterday. So I look at gaps. Apple was a gap up. Boeing today was a gap down. Okay. <clears throat> We're going to look at some trades here and some charts in a minute. But I view trading as something that the, the risk is, is worth it for the reward. You can't make money in the market without taking risks. And nothing in life that is great comes without taking chances or risk. People always want to know guarantees, this thing, that thing, and the other thing. And a lot of times people want to accelerate their, their goals thinking unrealistic, like they're going to make, like if they've lost money trading for the last 5, 10 years, that they're going to make all their losses back in a month once they find something that works. And they risk the farm, so to speak. That's not realistic. But if you learn a good system and you still have money to trade and to and to pay someone to learn their system like me, then you can start off fresh and brand new and say, I'm going to take this into the future. I've got six more months left in 2020. I'm going to turn this thing around and I'm never going to look back. 
You can't chase your tail when you're trading. You have to just take it day by day by day and move forward. And once you get in a good footing and a good framework, you'll see then that your goal of wanting to become a professional trader is possible. And that when you have volatile markets like right now, it's not scary. It's actually something that you get excited about. I was excited this morning when I saw that the market was gapped down. We actually did had Boeing puts on before today. So they were up through the strike when I got up in the morning. That's exciting. When you get up in the morning and you're up money and you didn't even take a trade at all that morning yet, that is exciting. This, it's exciting to take chances in life. It's exciting to take risk in the market. Okay. Any questions here so far? <coughs> Excuse me. All right. So where do you want to be, to say now, the end of 2020? Seems like a long way away, but you know what? It's hard to believe six months already are gone for this year already. I mean, can you believe it is almost July 4th? It seems like we've been stagnant in the last couple of months because the, the world has been stuck with all the things that have happened with COVID, but time keeps ticking away. The clock keeps moving on. And it's one of these things where you say, you know what? Half the year's over, okay? You wanna get to a point where you are achieving your goals and reaching your goals for this year, okay? And you still have time. So success in the market is about mastering a skill. I have a skill set. Like, again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about Boeing. I have a skill set that I saw this morning that Boeing was going to sell off the way it's selling off. I have a skill set that I saw Boeing was going to sell off in December of 2019. I didn't know about COVID-19 then yet. I didn't know about uh, some of the things that were going to happen in that chart, but I knew it was going to continue lower. So that's a skill. Now, how did I gain that skill? I gained that skill by reading gaps. It's technical analysis, but it's reading the gap. And that's how I'm able to make large consistent profits in the market. And if you can learn that skill and master that skill, then you can predict where a stock is going to go to. When you can predict where a stock is going to go and enter that stock and trade it before it goes, whether it goes up or whether it goes down, that is how you can profit and make money, okay? So if you knew Apple was going to go to 360, which it did, you could have bought the stock before it was at 360, and that's what we did. And then we made money going long. If you knew that Boeing was lower, you could have shorted it, which we did too, into the drop before it sells off, okay? So being able to predict if something's going to move higher or something's going to move lower is a skill set that you can master. One of the reasons people don't, don't, don't do that well and lose money trading in the market is because they're all over the place with different types of strategies. They don't stick on one thing. And they also get very sucked into the confusion that goes on within the markets. They'll listen to thing after thing. And if, some, if a trade is down, for example, they'll kill it. Then they'll flip it in the other direction. Then it will end up going in the direction they had it previously. And then they'll lose in two trades. You follow what I'm saying? <laughs> so it has to do with knowing what to do, even if you're in a position, and even if the position is down, and waiting for it to go, and holding the conviction, and sticking with it. I call it having 100% conviction. Will you have 100% conviction that what you're doing is right, you believe in it, and you hold the trade, and you let it play on out, okay? Now this was a clip here I put in here of the market. <clears throat> this was earlier today. Obviously, we've fallen off since then. But volatility shouldn't be scary. This is a chart of the SPY. It makes for big profits if you know what you're doing. Okay. Now, I'm just going to go over here quickly in the very basics. What is a gap? I'm going to go over the gap today. So this is the SPY. Closed yesterday at one price. Opened this morning at a different price. Closed at 4 o'clock Eastern Time. Opened at 9.30. So the SPY gapped down. So what does that mean? It means it closed at one price and opened at a lower price. Now, this sold off today, which I called. Okay, we were in it. You could still be in it. Now, not every gap down sells off. Some gap downs rally. I'm going to go back to a couple of days ago. Okay, this closed here. This opened here. This was a gap down. Okay, this rallied. Okay. This day here, this little green guy here is the 22nd. This is Monday, all right? So this red bar was Friday. So from Friday to Monday, <coughs> we gapped down. 
but we didn't sell off here, we rallied. Okay, so those are two gap downs. Now, there are also gap ups. Let's take a look at some of those. Here is a close at four o'clock where the market opened higher. This is a gap up. Okay, this was from the 15th to the 16th. Over here is another gap up. This is one that rallied, this failed. Here over here, we closed here at one price. This was back a couple weeks ago, early June, and we opened higher, boom. And we rallied at a different price. And actually we rallied for two days. This was a nicer rally here the first week of June. <coughs> so this, these are gap ups. This was a gap down, okay? So if you know how to play gap ups and gap downs, you know what to do to do the good ones. I call them the good ones, meaning ones that are predictable, okay? That you can predict that we're lower here or predict that we're higher here. Because again, like I said, you can't go long every bullish gap and you can't short every bearish gap or vice versa. So I'm looking for the good ones. I created a system, it's a rating system that I rate the gaps in the morning in the pre-market. Like all the trades I talked about that I called this morning, I saw way before the open. I saw as soon as I got out of bed this morning at 7 a.m., I saw all the gaps and then I rated them and they rated to go short. Okay, even though I don't take trades until after the open. <coughs> I will call trades on the options letter early and send them via emails for people to watch and get ready for the day. All right. Any questions, you can just write them. I'm seeing the questions on the side. But large moves happen in the first 30 minutes of the day in gaps. And I call them golden gaps. What do I mean? I mean the good ones, like I was saying. Ones that you can make a lot of money in. Ones like today like the spot, like Boeing, like the diamonds. So my system is a 26 point rating system. I'm looking at the daily chart. That's from where I'm seeing the gap. The gap can happen in the post market. The gap can happen in the pre-market, okay? We started to sell off a little bit last night, but really the gap followed through this morning in the pre-market. But we did have some selling in the post market last night. <laughs> I usually wait though till the morning to determine what I'm doing. The rating system is a checklist. The checklist tells you what to look for in the price of the stock. And the points predict price direction correctly when a stock is gapping. Again, to know if it is a long or if it is a short, okay? It's basically what I do is momentum. So the volatility is good for a trader like me because volatility means unexpected and momentum and very often something else called panic. So what you're seeing today actually is panic, panic selling. You say, well, what do you mean? Why are people panicking? People are panicking because of some reasons that are fundamental, some reasons that are news, and some reasons just because selling begets more selling. So once the market started to get some traction early this morning, it continues to fall off a cliff, I say, where the selling comes in. Now, people in the morning may not have packed initially at 930. But then, then they start to panic by 10. Then they start to panic by 10.30, by 11, by 12. Do you see? So panic is good for shorts. Sometimes panic can even happen in a long. You'll have people piling into a stock like Apple. Oh my God, we're going to miss it. It's going to go. There it goes. It's going without us. And that's how you get a rally like yesterday. Or even something like Amazon, okay, which went to basically the dream target, which was 2,800, okay? <clears throat> and that was before the sell-off that we've seen today. But anyways, my system, the point system, tells you where the money is flowing. How do you get movement in stocks? It's money. People are either buying it with their money or they are selling out of it. They could be selling out of stocks with profits or they could be selling out with losses, okay? Either way. Sometimes people are up and they panic. People could be up right now in many, many things that are bullish. People could be up in the market. People could be up at Apple. People could be up at Amazon. But they're still panicking because the stocks are falling. Okay? So why does this matter? It matters because you have to see where the money is flowing to take the position to profit. So my system has an 80% win ratio. And I'm looking for most of the move or 70 to 80% of the move that it's going to have within the first 30 minutes of the day. Now today is unusual because this is a power trend day which means that you'll get follow through most of the day or the majority of the day, all right? 
But many days, I'm just doing the money move that happens in the morning. I play it and I'm out by 10 o'clock Eastern time. Again, today is unusual because we have a power trend day. We did have a day like this two weeks ago in the market as well. And guess what? It was a short. It was to the downside, okay? So here was the call that I made in Amazon. We did get this move. This was pricing. Amazon is not cheap to, to trade in any regard. Um, I called, this is an option trade, and I'll show you the chart in a minute. I called the calls for Amazon the 2640s. The stock ran up. This was an exit of yesterday, which I thought was a fabulous exit. It was almost a 100-point move. One contract was 45 bucks. So you even, you know, so even to take one, you would have been a risk of $4,500, but it absolutely paid. The profit in this, if you took two contracts, was $19,800. This was a really, really nice move. And actually, if you held this through today's gap up, Amazon gapped up today, even though the market gapped down, like I said, this ran up even further and you could have made slightly more. But this was a beautiful, beautiful trade. And I'm going to show you, actually, the day I call this was the 17th. So here you go. This is the daily chart in Amazon. See this little bar here? Closed here, gapped up. Boom. So this is the day I called the trade. Again, called it after the 26th, was this a Friday? This is an option. You take the trade, you put the risk on, you wait for it to go. And then poof, and there it went. Made new highs. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful move, okay? So this was one that took a couple of days to get some traction, was up, but really got the nice move in the last 24 hours, okay? So this is a gap up, and this was a call. This was an option, okay? This is a nice way to trade extremely expensive stocks like Amazon to do options because even though you would have paid $4,500 for one contract, still a lot cheaper than what you would need for margin to trade a stock like this. And a stock like this can move. As I told you, <laughs> it went up to 2,800. So it went 160 points through the strike that I called it in the time, okay? And actually, if we, if we wouldn't have had the sell-off in the market that I was expecting today, this probably would have gone even further, probably would have made its way up to close to 3,000, okay? Now, this is another one that I've been watching. This is a put, okay? This was CCL, called this the same day. So some days we do puts and calls. The cost of this was $1.70, which is fairly cheap. 50 contracts was a risk of 8,500, sold at 260, 4,500 bucks, that's really nice. When I'm looking to take profits and options or even day trades, I'm looking for 50% to 100% normally. Today is an exception because we have the market with us, but I wanna show you what this did. So the strike of this was 19. So here was the gap. Now again, this is a gap down. So here's CCL. CCL closed here, gap down. Called the puts, and then it went and continued here boom 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 okay so here's the nice drop off so this again has been selling off and actually here's today we shorted this today in the day trading room too this is the ccm but this was a put and this was cheap you could have bought one contract and paid 170 bucks when you determine your risk for day trades or options trades, your risk should be the same or close to the same in every trade. Why? That's the only way you're going to have consistent results. This is an important factor that many people overlook with trading as well as far as trying to do well. Because if you want to take 10 trades, if you have eight winners and two losers, if your risk isn't close to the same or equal in 10 trades, you could lose all of the profits and eight winners and two losers if you if you don't have the same risk and those two losers losers you let go out of control. So it is important to set your risk and stick with it. Whether you're a beginner trader or whether you're an advanced trader. Okay. <clears throat> Any questions here so far? Anyways, go, going back here now to Monday. We did a day trade in CCL Monday. We did it today, we did it in Monday, and this wasn't even some crazy big move. This was just a normal move in the stock, and this just shows you how you can pile it on with size and make a lot of money. We shorted it at 1742, put the stop at 1775. 7,000 shares was a risk of 2,100. We add in, I do then wanna get the confirmation that the stock is going to continue in my direction. This was a short, okay? The 22nd was here. Again, guess what it did? It gapped down, people. Closed here, gapped down, boom. 
and we got the short. This was a day trade, not an option. Average price with the ad was 1734. Exit was 1668. Actually, this ended up going down to 1650. I was trying to give it more room, so I didn't have a great exit on this. I could have made more on this, but it was still a beautiful, beautiful trade. 9,240 profits. How is that possible? Size, getting the entry right, getting the direction right. You have to get the direction right in every trade that you take. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what you do. This was one back, again, been doing a lot of these indices in the market. June 11th, we did putts in the diamonds. Strike was 261. This isn't expensive, but I've seen these cheaper. Cost was 470, contract 16. Risk was 75.20, sold 11.75, profit 11,280. Again, one contract, you still could have made good money. Again, you could have made 100% plus. This is the whole idea. You're flipping your money over. You're turning it over. So I had called this on June 11th. This was the last day when I was talking about earlier that we had a power trend day in the market. This closed here, gap down, sold off, boom. Called the trade in the morning. You can see here, right before the open, you take it into the open, boom, you get the drop, okay? So this is, this, is, this is a power trend day here. Today we're having a power trend day too, which is unusual. It's unusual for the market to do that. Now I wanna show you another long. This was a day trade long. It was WWS Weight Watchers. This was on earnings. We did a day trade in this. Entry was 28.70. Stop was 28.10. Remember, this is a long, okay? We do longs and shorts. <coughs> Shares in this was 6,000. Risk was 3,600. Ad was 29. Again, the confirmation was higher. Tonal shares 12,000. Average price 28.85. Exit 29.75. Now, I'll show you this chart in a minute. I, I felt like it was going to go to 30, but this was a lot of profit for a fast trade. And again, big size in this, over 10,000 profit. It almost went a dollar, though. It almost went a dollar past that, which I'm going to show you here. Just should look at this, which is really funny. It literally, here's the gap up, close to your gapped up. We were in it. We, were, we waited a while to get this going. And then when it had the pop, I thought it was a good exit, but it actually went to 30. It actually went all the way up. It actually went almost a dollar past where we get out of it. Really nice move. Again, this is a bullish gap. Okay. This is WW. And then here was that same day. The day we had the power trend day in the spy. So I called the diamonds. I called the spy. These were puts. Okay, called it really super tight. Cost was six, contracts was 12, risk was 7,200, sold at 14, beautiful profit. Again, flip it over, more than 100% return on investment. That is a good solid trade. This is, this is a good solid trade. You just let it run out, you just let it run. You have 100% conviction, you put it on, you let it run out. And we had a power trend day this day. Profit was 9,600, risking 7,200, okay? And here was this, boom, closed here, gap down, sold off. That's it. So sometimes these go the same day. Sometimes they take a couple days to go. But big profits come in money moves. You got to get them right. You have to get them right. So my, my level of experience for the number of years I've been trading, the fact that I am so focused on just one thing, which is the gap. Um, also, because I'm on national television, I'm always so serious and focused on the information I'm saying. And for the quality of the trains that I'm calling, okay? So when you're doing this and you're trading, I don't care if you're risking $100, $1,000, $10 grand a trade. You must take it seriously. You must take it seriously. It's your hard-earned money when you're risking and taking money in trades. And again, you can't be back willy-nilly. It can't be like, oh, this is 50-50. You really have to feel like the trade is such high quality that it's worth you taking it, okay? <laughs> Makes sense? So yeah, hey, Melissa, this is this is Raleigh. Just wanted to jump in with a couple of quick questions sure. here um, uh, before we get too far on that. Back when you were talking about that CCI trade that you took that was very successful for it, was that one of the trades where you just basically held it for 30 minutes or is that one that you held longer? Was that a power move the, play? Uh, the CCL, there's been a lot of trades in this. The CCL day trade was just one day in and out. The CCL okay. option, you could have held. So the options, I will hold longer, but the day trades, we gotta be out by four. So I'm looking 
for that to make a move in the morning. Again, most of the times it's in the first 30 minutes or the first hour. Today we did CCL. In fact, I haven't looked at it right now because I'm talking. I bet it's continued. Is, this, is CCL at 16? We did a day trade this morning. I had a great exit on that, but I didn't hold that day trade all day. Boeing was the one I wanted to hold. Where's, where's CCL right now? Could somebody tell me? What's the price? What's the price of it? Is it at 16? Did it break it? And so while, while somebody's looking at this, so I just want to yeah. be here clear. Now that I understand exactly what you're saying, you're looking for a move within the first 30 minutes yes. to an hour. You're yes. not looking to get in and out of a trade in that period of time. Well, sometimes, you're looking for a conference, sometimes, but sometimes you could. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes we could. Sometimes you can. Like today we did. I knew it was further, but don't, but I wanted to take profits in at least one day trade. So I wanted to let the Boeing ride today. And I wanted okay. to book money in the CCL fast today. We were out of CCL today by 10 o'clock. I'm sure that it's by, by the way, it's at 16 right now. I, look at that. Am I? Look how good I am. <laughs> I'm, just doing well. I'm, so, I'm so good at what I do. I, I, I don't know what the future holds for me, but it's it's something big. I can tell you that right now. Like I literally I, I mean, I literally, 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 I, I'm going to tell you this right now. I called in Boeing today. Someone tell me what that stock's at. Tell me where Boeing is right now. I, and then you tell me where it is right now, and I'm going to tell you what the puts I've called in that today. They were insane. The numbers that I called in that stock today for the targets to hit were probably insane. They were so insane that I don't know if everybody took the trades, but the cheap of the price of them was so cheap. Where's Boeing at right now? Did it break 175? It's at 178.90. Did it break 175 yet? Yeah, I, I think so. It's at 178.90. So I called 180, 180, 180 puts. I called 175 puts. I even called 160 puts today. I have no idea when it gets there, but it's going to get there in the time that I called those trades. Those were some insane numbers that I called in that today. And if you did all those trades this morning when I called them, even if they don't get to those numbers, they're up. So the beautiful thing about, and I'm just going to go back here. Where's a Boeing chart here? Um, let's see. I know I have Boeing in here. Or maybe I don't have it. Maybe I didn't put Boeing in here. If you take a trade, okay, let's just look at the CCL. I'll go back here. If you take a trade, here, let's look at the market. If you take a trade, whether it's a, it doesn't matter what type. It could be an option. It could be a day trade. It could be anything. If you're getting it in, if you get it early enough, before the momentum comes into it, it doesn't matter if you'll be up money, whether it gets to the strike or not, if you do an option or even to the target or not, if you do a day trade, because the fact is you're, you're getting it. Like I get these trades early enough that you can do whatever you want. You can hold CCL to 16 if you want to hold it till 1230 in the afternoon, or you can get out of it at 16 to 1640, where we get out of it this morning at 10 o'clock. So you can, you can do whatever you want. That's the beauty of it. And so what I like to do usually is stack them where I'll do like two or three and I'll get out of one, hold two, or I'll get out of two, hold one. I try to stack them. The most important thing about trading is not to be a pig in everything. When you're a pig in everything you do, that's how you lose. So you can be a pig in one trade, but don't be a pig in five trades, okay? Because you ultimately, something will happen. Trump will tweet or something else will happen or whatever, and then you'll be up a lot and then you'll be down a lot. So the mark, the volatility means, does, doesn't mean holding everything forever. It doesn't mean being a pig. It means capturing the move. You're never gonna get out of the low of the day and you're never gonna get out of the high of the day in a long. Your objective is to make money and chunk it out. And some days you will have big trades. Now these, these trades today are, are gonna be big trades for people that, that are staying with them and for some of the strikes that I've called. But these are really nice profits today, even if the stock doesn't get to 175, even if the stock doesn't get to 160 today, which I'm not saying that it will, but I'm saying that it's going to within the time that I called, called those puts. And so, so sometimes we get out in 30 minutes because we're up and I wanna book money. It doesn't mean that it's done for the day. Do you follow me? I think I answered that. Was there any other questions? I'll look at if I can pull up my charts when we're done here. If I have time, I'll, I'll pull up and tell you where I think we're going today. If I can, once I get through this, I think I'll get through this here, this webinar, and then I'll pull. I'll just, I'll just talk at the end here about what's going on. Anyway, success. I think that yeah. would be great, Melissa. I think that would be fantastic. It would help clarify, you know, some of the statements that you've made. Doing a super job. Okay, great. So, anyways, getting back to what I was saying, you have.
have to look for quality and not quantity, okay? It's not about taking, you know, 25 trades in one day. A lot of people, I think, over-trade. I try not to do that. Today, there was opportunity, so we did a number of trades. Tomorrow, there may be nothing. Tomorrow, we may have one. Friday, we may have two. It's, I don't know. You know, I don't know how many good ones we're going to get till I get up in the morning. But the idea of quality is where my rating system comes into, into play, into factor, and that's so important. So I use my checklist. If you come and want to learn my system, this is what you're going to learn. It's just a sheet. It's a checklist. I go through in the morning, and I figure out what I'm doing. Is this a long? Is this a short? How does it rate? I'm looking for 20 points or more for 26-point checklist. But the higher the rating, the better the gap, okay? And I won't do anything unless it's over 20. So if it's a 17, 18, 19, it's 50, 50 chance of working or failing. That's not good enough for me. So I look for 20 or more. Do I look at anything else for market or stock trend before taking a gap trade? Well, I don't, I, I, I don't, I look at 26 things. That's what I'm saying. The market, I don't need the market. Today is a good example though, because we have the market. So in other words, I could, I could have gone long something today. But there wasn't any good bullish gaps. So if the market wants to fall, I'll still go long. In fact, I think the market did fall the day we did WW. I'll, I'll pull that up at the end and look at it. So I don't, I, don't, I don't need the market to do my gaps. I'm looking at individual gaps. Now, when we're talking about market gaps, the, I'm looking at the market individually as like it was a stock, okay, like an ETF when I say the SPY. But I don't need the market to do my trades, okay? which is nice. Today we have the market. So what does that mean? It means we're looking for larger, ta uh, larger targets. So in other words, you could have looked for a bigger target. Okay. I look at it in the morning and I rate the gap. That's what you'd learn in the class. Suge, Suge is asking about it. That's what you learn in the class. The class is 14 hours. Okay. But anyways, it's a, it's a 26 point rating system. And the purpose of this system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using the checklist. And what am I looking for? One, a high probability of directional bias for the entire day. Got it today. Perfect. In fact, I got it yesterday. In fact, I'm going to put the trading room from yesterday and today. I, I, I haven't had a chance to upload it to YouTube. I've had such a busy week. I'm going to put it in there yesterday. I told everybody, get out of all longs today. This is it. Get out of all longs today. We're going to drop tomorrow. To the last 24 hours, I did perfectly time what has happened in this market. Um, you know, we had the rally in Apple, we had the rally in Amazon. I said, get out of these calls today. This is it. And then I called shorts yesterday, which some people emailed me and said, what are you doing shorting here when the market's up? And we were down in this morning. So sometimes, sometimes I, sometimes I actually can predict where we're going to get that. I do not do that every single day, but I did do that yesterday um because i saw that we were going to fall but anyways i'm usually looking for big moves in the day early confirmation of my bias in the move between 9 30 and 10 and precise entries with follow-through and a good risk reward and when i say that i mean typically 50 to 100 percent but as far as today you let things play out today so you can make more money because it, it is important uh to for the days that you can capture big moves to make as much as you can in at least one or two things and again booking money is critical too so I had, oh no, here's the Boeing. I do have the chart in here. This was Boeing puts, I call it another one. I call it, I've got so many puts in this. June 10th, I called the 200 puts. Cost was 925, risk was 8325, sold at 36, 24,075 profit. This is a higher amount of risk. I call it an advanced trader, but I've been doing this a long time. But if one contract was 925 bucks, still could have made money, sold it for 36. It's a nice trade. This, and I called the 220s. So on Tuesday, I called the 220s. Then on Wednesday, I called the 200s. This wasn't cheap either, but one contract, one. You don't have to do six. You don't have to do 10. You don't have to do 50. One is still profit, okay? One. So you could have made 15,600 with that. So here was the Boeing. Oh, this was a day trade too. We've done this a million times. This was a day trade in Boeing that we did on this day. This was back here. This was the short on this day. This was the day here, the ninth, I called those first put. Then I called the second put on the 10th here. So here was the one, here was the next one, and then we did a day trade on this day two. This continued. So I clipped this here, 119 in the afternoon of the day here. It went red. It went red then. So we, we were in it before it went red, okay? 
Then we did a L. This was another one. Look how cheap this was. This is crazy. We didn't do this today. We should have done this today, too. This is probably continued lower. 75 cents was for one. Pile it on. So cheap. 225 we sold this at. 15,000 profit. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful move. Again, this was that similar day, the 9th. We did the diamonds here as a day trade, shorted it 262.40. This is not cheap for a day trade because you have to have margin. Again, you could do a put. You could do a put in it. 13,500 in one day. Here it is. Open, rallying, shorted it, got the drop. This was on that 11th, on the day on the 11th. So we shorted the diamonds here as a day trade. And again, you could have done this as a put. I am talking about what I do. I do gaps. Does everyone understand that? I've been talking about what I do the entire time. I trade gaps. I rate the gaps. I trade momentum. I trade volatility. I thought I'd been very clear about that. Someone said, am I going to show trade examples? Yes, I show trade examples, but I've been talking since the second that I started talking about the fact I do gaps. That is what I do. If you want to learn how I'm calculating the points, you will not learn that today. I'm sorry if you thought that. You will pay me for that information. People are making a lot of money with me. If you just did all the trades I did today, you would have paid for the class. My class is seven grand and is worth every penny. You don't get anything free from me except for what you're gonna get here today. And even me telling you that Boeing is lower right now, if you shorted that and me telling you it, you would have made money. So take that and run with it if you want a trade idea for today. But I've been talking the whole time about what I do. And that, that question just brings up what I was discussing earlier. You have to be invested in this if you want to do well. You have to. Coming to these webinars, it's wonderful to present. And I know I used to go to these things before I, I decided I wanted to teach myself. You will never learn how to trade if you go to every webinar every day for the rest of your life for the next 25 years. You will not learn how to trade and make money in the market if you watch every YouTube video and never sleep between now and the end of 2020. If you think that, you are completely mistaken. That is completely irrational. You will have to pay someone if you want to learn how to make money or if you want to get their trades. You have two options with me. You either pay to get my trades because you ain't going to get them for free. You're lucky you got what I told you today about Boeing. Or you're going to pay me what I know for the information to learn it and do it yourself so you don't have to get my trades for the rest of my life because I will not be teaching this class for the rest of my life. So you have an opportunity here to learn something today to see if you are interested in anything I have to say to see if I know what I'm doing, which by the way, I do, okay? And I will put up the YouTube videos from the last two days. <clears throat> but I, you know, it's, it's interesting to me, like when I was starting out, I never thought that I would just listen to all kinds of free stuff and be able to make money. I never thought that. And I guess I, I, I don't know, maybe it's a different philosophy, but I always was serious about it. I was always so serious about it. And I really tried hard to find something out there that I could just pay someone to learn how to do this without having to take up three years of my life. I couldn't. I paid for one class. I, I, it was worthwhile in the sense that I learned technical analysis skills, but I didn't learn how to make money in that class. I didn't learn how to make money in that class, and then I, re I made money in the gap one day, but I didn't have my point system. And then I said, you know what, there's something to this gaps. And then I looked out there and online, and many of the information about gaps wasn't good. It wasn't right. It was incorrect. People do gap bills. They do things wrong. And then I said, there's nothing. I have no choice. I have to trade myself and figure this out myself. I have no choice. So I made money, lost money, made money, lost money for a period of three years. And it wasn't like I woke up one morning and had 26 points magically, okay? It was a period where I was doing it over time. <clears throat> and it was frustrating because I never knew when I was going to figure it all out. And as year, the years have gone on, my skill set has improved. Just like if you did a sport. If you're a golfer, my father's a golfer. He's very, very good. Okay. He's been golfing for a long time. And the more he golfs, the better he gets. The more I train, the better I get. Okay. And that's how you have to think of it too. But if you're doing something for years, it doesn't work. And you're repeating mistakes over and over. You're never going to get any better because you're making mistakes and you're doing something that doesn't work anyways. So that's, that's the difference. But you must take this seriously if you want to do it. And if people didn't understand I was talking about gaps from the beginning, I don't know. Raleigh's taping this. I'm sure you can go back and re rewind and listen to the whole thing. But I do gaps, okay? They work well. They pay well. Today is a good example of that. 
I had the short in the market before it even started to sell off. Before even people were talking about it on TV, before we even got the traction, okay? You had to wait for Boeing to break. Boeing didn't break right away. It broke late. Um, did I, I just heard a beep. That just means that a, a, another panelist has joined us for oh, okay. the top of the hour. <laughs> I thought there was a question. But, but, <laughs> Hey, but no, but but Melissa, you know, I just wanted to I just wanted to jump in here for just a uh, just a moment here because I think it, it brings up a good point. Like many of us, for example, we started out trading, and you were in the same position, and you found your way. What what really? I mean, were you into gaps from the beginning, or is it something that you just migrated to because of the sense that they made? I made a lot of money one day in Netflix, which was a short, which was a gap. It was about the first three months that I started trading, and, and then I never looked back. I made more money in gaps than I did in other things that I learned at the beginning, and that's why I gravitated towards them, because okay. gaps have momentum, and gaps tra have volatility, and that's how I got to them. But there are other things that you can do. You can trend trade, for example, but in this kind of market, see how you're getting killed with the trend trades. Because the fact is the market isn't an uptrend in the QQQs. The market isn't an uptrend in the SPY. And it, you couldn't have gone long today and made any money. And actually, if you're long some of these things, you're down today or not up as much as you were yesterday. And you say, well, I don't know what to do. As an active trader, you need to be able to flip it around and go long and short. There's a benefit of being an active trader versus a long-term investor. I'm not a long-term investor for what I do with my trades. You can use what I do with the gaps to read long-term moves. That's how I'm reading the market. Um, but but that's a different story for another day. As far as losing trades, of course I lose in trades. That would be, again, that would be totally unrealistic to tell you I don't lose in trades. I do lose in trades. I have an 80% win si uh, system. That means 20% of the trades I lose in. That's why I use stops. You can go back and look at the slides of where I had a stop in. That means if I get stopped out, then I lose. And as far as options goes, what I risk is the stop. That's it. So if I risk $8,000, it, I, I let them, I play them all out. So they either go before they expire and I make money and get out with the profit, or if they go bust, they go bust and I'll lose the whole amount. So I don't sure. I don't tightly manage my options. They're win or lose for me, every one. And I find that the way that I trade that works the best for me. So when <laughs> you know, as part of, you know, one like once again, just going back a little bit to your process when you wake up in the morning and take a look at what's going on, um, do you have some do you use some kind of a scanner to scan for gaps or do you do you have a favorite basket of stocks? Or, or things that you look at, Melissa, and you that's can, what you, you focus can, on? I don't have a scanner. I paid for a scanner years ago, and I found it was overlap. You can go to a million free sites, www.yahoo.com. You can go to nasdaq.com. You can watch the news in the morning, Fox Business or CNBC. You can get a list of earnings that are out every morning and every night and just pull them yourself. I paid for a scanner, and I found that it was just, it was just a repeat. Like Nike's okay. out Thursday night. You can watch Nike tomorrow night and see what it does. It's going to gap. I don't know if it gaps up. I don't know if it gaps down, but the earnings are Thursday night and it's going to do something. I think KBH is tonight. <laughs> you can look at KBH tonight. Um, somebody's saying something about Boeing to $66. I didn't say Boeing is going to go to $66 by Friday. If it does, then then I'm going to take the rest of the month off, though. <laughs> Tell you that right now. I'm taking I'm going to all the Boeing trades. I have one right now. I'm just I'm just closing the room for the rest of the month. Um, <laughs> just, do I have reviewing a trade on the network as a gap as a false alarm? I don't know what you mean by a false alarm. I don't know what you mean by that. I do reviews on YouTube. I do reviews which I send out to clients. I do reviews in the trading room. The false alarm question. I don't mean. I don't know what you mean. What percent of your trades or options or what percent? What percent of your trades are options? I, I, I can't answer that question. I don't know what percentage. I'd ha I, no one's ever asked me that before. I would say it's a good mix. It's a good mix. A mix of, of stocks that you're day trading and options that you're holding for a yeah. longer period of time. Yeah. I tell you, there's certain things, though, that I won't do as options because they don't make any sense to do. And there's ones that I typically gravitate to, like the big ones. I call them the high flyers because they have big moves and because I'm not day trading Amazon on margin. That makes no sense to me. So there are ones that I gravitate to that I think are my favorites. Something like Boeing, though, I wouldn't say that's cheap, but I would say, I mean, to, to, to day trade that today is a beautiful move. But if you did the put, it's a beautiful move, too. I think it, it depends how much money you have. If you don't have enough money for a margin account, which is $25,000 or more for a retail place, a retail broker or a prop place where you need at least 2500 
if you if you don't have enough money to trade on margin then options are a way to open up an account at a retail broker without having to worry about margin i think you can open up nowadays two grand you can open up an options account at any place like ameritrade or wherever you want to go sure absolutely and i think once again to one of the earlier questions and i'm just going to kind of restate what i'm taking from your presentation melissa is that you showed us at the beginning that some gaps are good ones and some gaps are bad ones and you have developed a rating system that gives you a high percentage of picking or understanding which ones are the good ones because i think as you said they better score 20 points or more when you do your rating system to be even considered is that a fair synopsis that's right that training and someone 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 asked something about this earlier training is about probability it's probability it's high probability either the odds are in your favor high probability so i said this is high probability it's not it's not always going to work so it's, that's why we set our risk. Otherwise, I'd risk you know my whole account in every trade. That's ridiculous. It's high probability. I'm looking for high probability. I'm going to tell you right now, high probability, in my opinion, in my professional opinion, that the SPY does not make brand new all-time highs before the end of 2020. High probability it does not. Does that mean that it absolutely won't? No, it could. But in my opinion, in my professional opinion, it's a high probability that the S&P will not make brand new all-time highs before the end of 2020. So it's high probability. That's what you're looking for when you take trades. You don't know if it's going to work or not until it plays out. You have high probability. That's where my rating system is important. When it has so many points, 20 is a lot, 22 is a lot, 26 is a lot. That means, you know what? The odds are in my favor, high probability. It's any other decision that you'd make in life. You walk outside, is there a high probability, depending on where you live, that if you don't wear a mask and you go right up and start kissing strangers that you could get COVID-19 in New York City? Probably, probably right now, because there's a lot of people that have it. So you at least say, sure. well, you know what? High probability is if I go out, wear gloves, wear a mask, and stay within six feet social distancing, then I'm not going to get sick. So I'm going to go outside and go to the grocery store today. But I'm going to take the normal protections. The stop is the protection. Mm -hmm. Well, that sounds great. And, you know, Melissa, uh, and, and thank you once again for just expanding on that. We have about 10 minutes to go. Yeah, let and me I know just, that yeah, I know, know you wanted to show some charts or you've got a couple of wrap up things here you want to talk about an offer that you have. Yeah. Uh, let me just yeah. get here. I'll, I'll fast forward here to the end. The class is this weekend that I'm doing for June. It's June 27th to 28th from nine to five. Again, my class is 69.99. And the summer special I'm offering for this weekend is the Gap Options newsletter through Labor Day and the trading room through Labor Day, which are free with the class this weekend. Normally, you'd pay for those subscription services. So you get all my trades for the newsletter and in the trading room live, like the ones we talked about today, uh, if you did the class this weekend. Now, let me pull up my charts. If I just put that up, can you see it? Let me see if it's it's part of your sharing your screen. We should be able to see it as long as you select that screen. Can you see it or not? No, I'm still looking at the uh, special offer on your uh, okay, on your me, on your let PowerPoint. Let me stop sharing and reshare and see if I can do it again. OK, there. There you go. We see them now. Yep. Okay, what is the average holding period for your trades as we have PDD rules of follow? Da, 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 da. If you're talking about, well, day trades, the average time is we're out by, we're out in the morning usually, we're, except for today is an exception. Day trades are out in 30 minutes and an hour, unless it's a power trend day, which the market is today. As far as options, they could go within 24 to 48 hours. So you might have a move that goes in one day, yes. So if you have, you can't be active in and out, in and out, in and out. There are some days then you're going to get a move and then you wouldn't be able to get out if that's what you're saying. I think you have a, a limit on how many trades you can do. But I would say most trades are overnight within 24 to 48 hours that you'll go. Like I would call it and then you could hold it for a day or two. But sometimes it's a couple of days. But I don't want to tell you that I might call something like today. The trades I called today, you could get out of today. If you don't get out of them today or we lower tomorrow, I'll look at the market right now and tell you what I think. But if, you, if you're up a lot and you don't get out, you're taking a chance. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, I'll, here, let's look at that. Let's look at, let's look at this guy. Oh, yeah, look at this. Beautiful move. Look at that, 302. Let me just look at everything here really quickly. 
This is lower. Yeah, we're, we're, I think we're, I think we're, I think we're gonna have some nice follow through here now. Could we follow through, we got three more hours left in the day here. So we could follow through here today more, but you see here where the SPY came into the first target here. This red bar, I'm gonna blow it up as a, as a 200 pair moving average. So if we go lower than this, like look where we have to go. We have a long way to go. Because, because you look at this, you say, okay, this looks like it got to the first target. But then you look at the diamonds and you say, gosh, we still got more to go in the diamonds. This is the diamonds. Now let's look at the QQQs. These are all the market instances I'm looking at right here today. And we got, we get, came down here and this to the first target. But if you have stocks, again, Boeing is a part of the diamonds. Apple is a part of, um, you know what, let's look at some strong stuff and I'll tell you. I'll tell you what I think. Let's look at some strong stuff here to see if, what the traction in some of these things. Yeah, I just think we're lower here. And whether we're lower in the next three hours or whether we're lower in the next three days, it's really hard to say here because it's too early to say. Like we could, I don't know where we end up today at this point. We could go back down. If we go back down into today's lows though, I'll tell you we're gonna break it. So if we, here, here's what I think. Here's my two cents on between now and the end of the week. If we get some, uh, we could either follow through today, go back down to the lows, break it, have a really hard sell-off into four o'clock and then after hours, and then have a, a tight range tomorrow, or we actually rally tomorrow, or we do not go back down to the low of the day here today. This is it. We have the nice sell-off into the lunchtime period, and, and, and that's it. And then we go get up tomorrow morning, we have a bad number or a number that's not expected for the unemployment claims, and the market reacts negatively, and we open lower again tomorrow. So this could be the end of the sell-off today, and the market could be waiting to see what happens tomorrow morning on those unemployment claims. The problem with the unemployment claims numbers that's been coming out every Thursday is, even though there were, they're, they're going down as far as number of people, they're, it's going on and on and on. So you can't have 1.2, 1.3 million people filing unemployment claims every week for eight, 10, 12, 40 weeks. It's just getting to the point where it's, it's not stopping. Do you know what I'm saying? And that that right. is problematic. So this could be the end of the sell-off for today, and then we're lower tomorrow if the number is bad. And then if we are, watch out, because we could really drop. We have a long way to go down. We sure do. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of potential for correction there. Absolutely. Well, Melissa, listen, thank you so much for your time. I mean, this has been a very, very fast hour. You covered an awful lot of material. And uh, we certainly do appreciate your time and the effort that you've taken to go ahead and put this together and, and to be a, a member of our community. <laughs> oh, thanks for having me, Raleigh. It was so nice to meet you today. I've talked to you like 100,000 times. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We, we, we've been texting back and forth forever. I know. Uh, but but this is great. And once again, I think I think it's exciting what you what you've got going on and you've got definitely something that you focused on. You've really developed it and uh, you. Uh, I just want to, once again, thank you for the time that you spent coming in today. And folks, you can see here, I just want to make you aware of the fact that her special offer, she's got a comprehensive course that where she's going to basically share with you how she goes ahead and makes choices and how she trades the markets. And she's offering as part of that a free ebook and a newsletter as a part of that service. And you can find that all at westmarktrading.com slash MA. Go ahead and click that. It's going to take you right uh, to Melissa's uh, website at the Stock Switch. So Melissa, once again, thank you very much for being our, our guest this morning. Thank you and stay safe, everybody. Have a great week. All right.